Hi guys, Ryu here with Latitude for Blender and let's talk about Boolean Aftermath. So, when you're dealing with Booleans, right, first you need to ask yourself a question, do you really need to fix it? I mean, if it's visible, you need to fix it. If it's not, don't worry about it. But let's say if it's visible, then we need to fix it. So, let's go to this example. First of all, what I'll do is try to help these supporting pillars. So I probably would just run some loops in here and, you know, support this structure, right? Then I would probably run some more loops in here just to create more loops for um, for, for the cuts to come because we will be slicing this, uh, you know, we will be slicing this area. How many cylinders do I have? This bevel is a bit too big, so let's make it a bit smaller. There we go. Let's talk. About, let's apply this and let's talk about it. So smart apply. Okay. Now, first of all, you want to keep verts outside the bevel area. So, for example, here it's hot lining with the bevel. So, if I'm going to apply the bevel, there's going to be an edge coming over here. I can show you. See what I mean? And that's what's causing the issue. So, if you see shading like that, you probably want to move it up. I would not recommend moving it left because it. Remember, these are supporting pillars. You might change the shading of the cylinder up and down is fine. That's irrelevant. But you know. This probably could be okay, so you could do something like this, but not not now, not yet. I will remove this one definitely, and uh, do something probably like that. Okay, just to contain that area, and this will be fine. Also, it's a good practice to keep these things unified. So you know, if it's a circle, you wanna be more or less symmetrical. You could sort of mirror it across, but. Uh, this probably is fine, um, but you see the shading changes depending on which way you're gonna go. So you always need to watch the, the tension of your shading. I think this is gonna be fine. Um, another thing is that you don't really want angles, I mean uh, lines or edges falling into your geo at the steep angle because they will cross the bevel uh, in a really steep angle and it's gonna cause havoc. You see how the shading is changing. It just gets better when I get to the top, so when I merge it with the vert here, it's gonna be perfect. So you also have to understand how your edges flow and how your geo flows. And then you can argue that, you know, all this geo here is unnecessary. Yeah, but I can remove it. I, I really don't need it. So I'm gonna leave just this, uh, these two, right? And I, I can remove all this, I don't need it. Because these um, horizontal edges, right, they're irrelevant. They don't do... They, they do nothing for the shading, see? It doesn't matter that there's an angle in here, it just doesn't matter. Because it's flat. I mean, it's curved on this, uh, it's curved, it's curving this way, right? But not this way. Do you know what I mean? So, um, let's uh, let's go back here and, and see what we can do here. So let's try to fix this, shall we? We could run, you know, this loop around now the problem is that we're going to be creating um, larger angles all around, but it's okay as long as we can, you know, contain them, it's fine. So let's create a, a edge edge over there and let's remove this one. This is going to be a bit of a problem, so I might actually connect these two. And I'll see this one falls at the two steep angles, so we might actually revert this line up here. But this is going to shift the shading. You see that? It shifted the shading. So I'm going to go back, create another line in here, which I will actually remove before, right? I removed this edge. And I'm going to go back with it and come back here and do something like this, okay? And this will support the shading. And now I can actually move this edge up. It's going to be fine, you see? Because this one supports it. And to be honest, I don't need this. I created it just to support it, you know, just to imagine like a mine, okay? You create this pillar to support the mine. And you think there's gonna be a shading issue? No. It's gonna be fine. If it's gonna give you grief, you can just slide some verts, but most of, most of the time they should be fine. So we got a problem here. You know why? Because this angle is too big. So again, watch. Let me fix this. I'm going to create an edge here, right? Um, let me go back. I'm gonna create an edge here just temporarily, okay? I'm gonna grab this vert, I'm gonna slide it a little bit up, okay, to relax it, then dissolve it, then I'm gonna create edge here, and I'm gonna combine it like that. 
see what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna work on the bottom here. I can't move this one much further, but I could create another loop in here. Again, these loops are completely irrelevant. Okay, the side loops. I can just go here and remove this. Doesn't matter. All matters. All that matters is here in this area. We have double verts in here for sure. I can see it. There we go. Boom. Shading fixed. And now let's remove this. And we should be fine. Let me see. See what I mean? It's all about supporting and redirecting the tension. It was messed up, but it's fine now. So before you move the verts and edges, try to support the structure. Just think about, you know, like you're working in the mine, okay? If you move forward, dig in the corridor, it's going to collapse behind you, right? You need to support it before you do anything. And that's a whole trick to working with, uh, with bullions. So it's not about the angles, it's about size of the angles and the angle at which they bend. So if this, for example, curvature was much stronger, this angle would cause shading issues because it's already, we're pushing the limit of the size here. You can see here, it's a bit of a bulging. It's much larger bulging on this uh, vert than this one you see here. Let me show you one more thing. So I'm gonna make a new cylinder. Actually, no, we can use this one. So, let me grab one of these cutters, right? And let's move this here. Let's move it here and let's cut it. So now let's talk about it. So we got this cut, right? Let's move it a little bit here because it's causing havoc with the bevel. There we go. So it's a good example, you know, like when you have something that causes you issues like this, if you don't have to, you know, place this balloon in this specific location, just move it a bit because it's intersecting with the line with this edge here. But now check this out. If I apply this boolean, right? I'm not gonna have um, any, any supporting lines inside of this cut, okay? So watch. If I go here, right? I have nothing in here, no supporting lines. However, what I can do, right? Let's go back. What I can do is instead of um, manually you know creating loops in that place i can just loop, loop the cutter okay and then when i cut it okay so i'm gonna apply smart apply let's bring it to local you see i got loops and they cut in so now if i want to move them right just select a, select a loop and gg and then e and slide it to the edge like that then i can create a you know, loop all around if i want to so that makes things much easier so remember, supporting the structure that you're working on is essential for cre creating clean shading, even with angons on curved surfaces with bullions and bevels. It's possible, just need to need to be like a mesh whisperer, okay? Need to feel the tension of the mesh, which, which way it's gonna bend. Hope you enjoyed the vid, guys, and learned something useful. Thanks for watching. Drop us a like and subscribe if you did. It's always helping, it's really appreciated. I'll talk to you next week. Cheers.